And we begin this Sunday morning with two tiers of justice. Donald Trump and the potential for an indictment. The former president rallied the crowd last night in Waco, Texas. Regimes weaponization of law enforcement against their political opponent is something straight out of the Stalinist Russian horror show. You go back to communist China or look at a third world banana republic. That's what we've become between our borders, our elections and the weaponization of law enforcement. Meanwhile, back in Washington, Republicans are stepping up their demands on the Manhattan DA to find out what is behind a potential unprecedented arrest of a former president. Republican Congressman Jim Jordan, James Comer, and Brian Stile sent a letter to Alvin Bragg yesterday urging to get access to the communication, the documents, and the testimony behind a potential criminal indictment over claims of hush money payments made seven years ago. Here's Representative Brian Stile with me Friday before sending that letter. Are there federal funds being used in this investigation? A lot of federal money goes to the district attorney's office for actual public safety. Are those being used for partisan purposes? Two, is he coordinating with any federal agencies, in particular the United States Department of Justice's office? That's important because the DOJ has chosen not to prosecute in this case. House Oversight Committee Chairman Congressman James Comer in a letter to the White House is demanding President Biden correct his denial that members of his family did not take money from China. Joining me right now is Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson, who started an investigation into the Biden family influence peddling five years ago and has already revealed bank records indicating Biden family members accepted money from a Chinese energy company. He's also a member of the Senate Homeland Security Committee. Senator, it's good to see you this morning. Morning. Thanks very much. Assess where we are in this two tiers of justice. Certainly feels that way with a potential Trump indictment and no commentary whatsoever from the White House on these bank records from Biden. Uh, good morning, Maria. Well, there's no doubt about that. We probably have a multiple tier system of justice. So you won for the well connected Democrats, uh, the kid glove treatment that uh, Hunter Biden certainly has experienced. Uh, yeah, is there a serious investigation? We really don't know. Uh, cer certainly, Senator Grassley and I laid out uh, all the very troubling financial transactions, millions of dollars flowing to their accounts, then flowing out to family members. And I'm really encouraging and really appreciate uh, what uh, uh, Congressman Comer and, and uh, Jordan are doing. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to be able to subpoena the U.S. bank records that uh, you know, we, we requested the information, but uh, we didn't receive anything. The, the only bank rec records we got, and this is pretty interesting, we got them from Cathay Bank. You know, is that the Chinese uh, Communist Party? Is that a shot across, across uh, President Biden's uh, bow saying, listen, this is some of the information we have. Uh, if you don't toe the line, if you don't uh, do uh, things that uh, please us, uh, we're going to even provide even more information. So. Uh, we we ha obviously have a multiple tier system of justice. This is a obviously politicized uh, prosecution of uh, President Trump. You saw the way the news media handled the January 6th committee, the, you know, all, all kinds of uh, praise for that, completely partisan uh, effort, and then legitimate oversight that the House is doing now. Now that's, that's termed uh, highly politicized by the mainstream media. It's, it's not, not a fair fight. It's not a level playing field, Maria. Yeah. And, and, and at this point, President Trump is using it as his campaign message because it's right there and obvious to everybody uh, what's going on here. We need more information, and I know that James Comer is trying to request that, uh, but you made a really important point, that it was the Chinese bank that gave you the Hunter Biden records, not U.S. banks. No, it, again... <laughs> That is a very interesting uh, development right there, that uh, a bank from China, let's face it, uh, the Communist Party controls uh, those types of institutions. They, they willingly gave us the, uh, the documents that backed up the Treasury records. You know, and another example, by the way, of unequal application of justice. Remember how the FBI tried to pay uh, Christopher Steele a million dollars to have him verify the Steele dossier, which they knew was a Russian disinformation as early as October 2016. And yet when they got the Hunter Biden laptop, uh, we have whistleblowers told us that they were told, do not look at that laptop. We also have whistleblowers say that uh, U.S. Attorney Weiss doesn't have the resources he needs for a real investigation, the type of investigation that uh, the American public should expect from the Justice Department. Wow. So, no, I mean, we, 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 have, we have a completely unlevel playing field here. 
And, and last week, uh, James Comer told us that so far he's gotten uh, bank records for, on one deal, the CEFC deal, where Rob Walker received $3 million from Communist China the very next day. A $1 million plus of that was distributed uh, to Biden accounts. But he said that there are 11 more deals that he is going to get to the bottom of. That was just one deal. And all of this is happening, uh, Senator, in the face of really uh, obviously bad policy with regard to the economy. You had a number of people in front of you in your committees this, this week and last week. You spoke with Janet Yellen uh, as the Silicon Valley Bank collapse uh, went uh, underway and the Signature Bank. This week, we also had Credit Suisse acquired by UBS. We're worried about First Republic. What did you learn from Janet Yellen and how was that? That you also spoke with uh, Mr. Becerra uh, about the homeland security situation. Walk us through what you learned this past week. Well, I learned from Jenny Allen is uh, she is detached from reality as, as the president is. You know, Admiral Mike Mullen back in the 2010 2011 timeframe said the greatest threat to our national security is our debt and deficit. That's when our debt was at $14 trillion. Now it exceeds $32 trillion, and the, the Treasury Secretary was before the Finance Committee talking about President Biden, which would drive that debt up to over $50 trillion over the 10-year budget window. And she, she wouldn't even admit that the massive deficit spending was a major contributor. So she's either delusional or she's just lying to the American public. And, of course, we had this HHS Secretary Becerra in front of us. We've been trying to get the last 50 pages of the Fauci emails. Uh, they've allowed us to look at 350 pages uh, in 50-page tranches in a reading room. Can't make copies, but we can, you know, write down what we're finding. Now we're down to the last 50 pages. We've been trying to get those for over a year. This has to do with the origin of, of COVID. Uh, the secretary said he, he thought that that's an important thing to do, and he complained that he wasn't getting cooperation from the people they were investigating. Well, we're not getting cooperation from HHS Secretary Becerra. So I'm hoping that we release those 50 pages because uh, the resistance Kind of, kind of indicates to me that that's probably where some relatively incriminating information is. Yeah, we're going to wait for that. We don't know why you're not getting that. But I also want to point out the foreign policy mistakes that have been made because you also indicated to me when I spoke with you recently about these war games that really showed weakness in terms of the U.S. Walk us through how you see Biden's America today from economic to foreign policy. Well, just about every policy decision he's made has weakened this country. The embarrassing and dangerous surrender in Afghanistan certainly emboldened Putin and President Xi in North Korea and Iran. Uh, our open border flooding fentanyl into our cities, the human and sex trafficking, the 40-year high inflation of war on fossil fuel driving up gasoline to record levels. I mean, all these actions, rising crime in our streets by these George Soros-funded DAs that refuse to prosecute crime, but they'll, they'll prosecute the uh, former president. Uh, everything that these liberal leftist radicals are doing to this country are weakening it, emboldening our enemies, and as a result, the world's a far more dangerous place under the Biden administration. Well, I mentioned the war games because there was an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal, Republicans get a Taiwan war game education. Uh, what about that? Because, you know, we spoke with Mike Gallagher recently, and he told me that he thinks uh, China could go into Taiwan as soon as 2024. He said, we'll be distracted with our election. They're going to be distracted with an election in Taiwan. That's the year that he's worried about. And going into that, we see this opinion in the journal about how ready the United States really is. Well, one of the problems with the war in Ukraine is depleting our stockpile of munitions. Uh, the House uh, were, were engaged in a war game during their retreat. Uh, in that Wall Street, Wall Street Journal piece, they said uh, one of the results of that is that we could deplete ourselves of ant long-range anti-ship missiles in a day of fighting. Uh, again, we, we need to be sure that we can defend our own nation before we start uh, beating the drums of war around the world. So uh, the, the best way to counter all of this is to strengthen America, uh, solve our debt and deficit issues, strengthen our economy, uh, provide better, better jobs to America and end inflation. But we're going the exact opposite direction under the Biden administration. Senator, it feels that Ron DeSantis lost some, uh, some uh, leadership in the polls after he made the comment about Ukraine. Look at this poll, uh, and this is a... Uh, a likely matchup. Of course, we're waiting to hear from the governor of Florida as far as when he will enter this race. He joined me two weeks ago and, and wouldn't go there. But you've got the 2024 Republican primary race uh, with Donald Trump 
all the way up to 54 percent. Ron DeSantis at 26 percent. And this is after the governor made comments about Ukraine. You feel the same way. You don't think we should be sending all this money to Ukraine, right? Well, I mean, there's no doubt about the fact that no, nobody wants to provide aid and comfort to Putin. He's evil. He's committing atrocities and war crimes. Uh, that being said, uh, I think most people are highly sympathetic with the Ukrainians. They're defending their freedom, their children, uh, their territory. Uh, but I will say, back here in Wisconsin, uh, the war in Ukraine is not a popular thing. And again, I, I, I've got to, I, I don't see... I don't see this getting better day after day. You know, there, there may have been a situation where we prevented uh, Putin from invading. I don't think he would have done so under Trump, but uh, under Biden's weakness, he did. Uh, once invaded, uh, once we were not able to repel him initially, uh, now this just grinds down because uh, nobody's going to be bombing Moscow cities to uh, reduce the popular support for the war in Russia. And you just grind Ukraine down, you just destroy it bit by bit, kill more people. I, I don't see this getting better. So at some point in time, you have to recognize the reality of the situation and, and act accordingly. But, but do you think that if this continues then, and he wins, then he, he, he goes to Poland, he goes to other areas to continue to recreate his Soviet Union that he's looking for? Again, I, I don't see Putin winning. This is a lose-lose for everybody. Mm. And as soon as everybody realizes it's a lose-lose situation, maybe they'll sit down and talk and say, let's end this madness, let's end the destruction. Mm. All right, we will keep watching that. Senator, it's great to get your insights on all of that. Thanks very much. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.